Okay, we're, we're ending, we're finishing up on the six forms of alliances with acquisitions, which could be considered a, a takeover or a buyout or other terms for it. It's with one entity ends up with over 51% control of an organization. And they happen in a variety of different ways. I mean, you could have it through a, oh, well, let me give you an example of one before I do that. When Michael Dell was looking to expand Dell Computers, he decided that he wanted to go into a different line of work to expand his services. And instead of uh, being just a manufacturing, he wanted to offer the software side of it. And he purchased Perot uh, Systems. And by doing so, in one fell swoop, he built an brought an organization, and he was now able to offer the services in a different category. Acquisitions are a very powerful tool. It's a means by which people can uh, quickly add, for example, innovation to their organization. You'll learn about this later on in the innovation chapter, where we talk about how uh, looking out for disruptive innovation or to, to gain access quickly to technologies. Acquisitions are used as a means of being able to do that. But here are a few key areas that are reasons why. One of them is that people acquire companies for their technology. They're looking to rapidly add a set of services and one example would be they would be adding um, the Prime Resources, uh, Prime View International was purchased to be the e-reader for the Kindle. Amazon didn't create it. They went out and purchased the company and that gave them the ability to offer a unique type of reading experience where an individual doesn't see the same screen, but it feels more like paper. It's used, uh, an acquisition is used just because it's easier. I mean, building an organization from scratch takes a lot of time and effort. And if you could acquire somebody then it's done. The infrastructure is in place, the offices are in place, the space is in place, the products have been developed. Whatever you're looking for, they're already there. Uh, personnel. You might in, engage in acquisitions because you like the personnel. Uh, it's, it's commonly known that Google will buy a company for its personnel and often not do anything with their product that they've purchased. They're doing it because they need that talent that they like to bring in. Acquisition is also used for the purposes of eliminating a competitor. I mean, if the company's out there and they're in your way and they are bothering you in a certain market or they're, they uh, have a, a better footprint or a different for, footprint, you might go out and acquire that company. It gives you the resources to be able to expand your breadth and scope of products and services delivered to market. You could also grow rapidly. Uh, there's a company right now that we use called Orange Field. And Orange Field, when I met them, was ICS. ICS was a company in Asia that helped set up a company for other entities to get or navigate the uh, South, uh, the Asia marketplace. And so they did that. They grew the company. To, uh, there was 50 employees. The uh, owner did extremely well in the business. And we had started working with them. Within a short period of time, they were purchased by a company out there, I believe the Netherlands. Uh, they were Dutch. They, I believe they are Dutch. They had, uh, they acquired ICS as a means of expanding their footprint. And they offer, opened up offices in China and a variety of other places. And they've done extremely well. And within a short period of time, they just were purchased by, I think, a private equity group. What has happened in this industry very quickly, and one of the fastest I've seen in a very long time, is the industry consolidated in rapid speed. I mean, unbelievable. You had all of these independent organizations, no less than eight years ago, seven years ago, you really had very few opportunities to be able to work with a, an organization that could set up entities understand legal, compliance, do all the, uh, the work necessary to run an organization, set up your banking for you. And within five years, seven years, the whole thing was swallowed up. And now, just was talking two nights ago uh, over lunch with a friend of mine, the company has been acquired. So now they're trying to figure out how their offices, where there's duplication of effort, where, what systems are they going to run, and they're going to be the largest by a long shot in the industry. Now, there's a, another industry that I could share with you, the office space industry. 
Uh, I had dinner with the CEO of the Asia market recently, the office space, the, the rental office space industry for, uh, let's say you need a small type office and you're gonna go to multiple cities. You can, right now, you could rent and pay for a membership where if you were in uh, <coughs> Paris, London, New York, you can go to one of their offices and be able to set up. And that industry is dominated by a major player, Regis. And Regis has, oh, I don't even know the number right now, over a, um, th a thousand places. Or, sorry, I don't even know the number. You could probably look it up. And uh, it's not as important as uh, what they've done is they've grown through acquisitions. They've uh, purchased space all over and they're building new facilities constantly. So acquisitions are a tremendously powerful tool. They don't have, always have to be hostile. They'd be a great way to expand your organization. Uh, the last one that I'd like to share that's, uh, that I like is uh, you can use it in an interesting way. Donald Trump, who's now running in the U.S. for president's office, he's made a big stir. Donald Trump was trying to buy a piece of property down in the south of the U.S. And in doing so, he went to this individual because he wanted to put a golf course in and all sorts of other uh, hotel type services. And he went to this lady and she, offered, she asked for a tremendous amount, a sum of money. So he acquired all the land around her home or her building. And then without that, she didn't have anything to bargain with. She, he went back and he bought it for a dance. I think it was $3 million. And he did it by using the acquisition strategy. Part of the thing that I want you to know is, first of all, it's always a transfer of assets. And in everything we've gone over in all the alliances, I would recommend that you do your due diligence. Make sure you're getting together with the right person, uh, the right people, the right products and services. We're hearing a lot right now in 2015 about companies that have been publicly traded that aren't as who they represent themselves to be. Maybe they've hidden assets. Maybe they don't have the sales that, they've, that they are uh, professing to be. And there have been many situations where they've turned around after an acquisition has been made, a merger has been made, or any of the alliances have been made, and you found out you're in bed with the wrong party. So do your due diligence. Make sure you know what you're doing, the steps that you're taking are right. And I'm going to give you, in the next section, I'm going to give you some tools called Alliance Pillars and Alliance Killers and uh, different methodologies and ways to look at creating the right alliance. So you're not alone. I'm going to be here with you, sharing with you what you need next.